And guys, I, I do have to give you the bad news that um, this video is not the video where the Ditex transducer will be um, up for winning yet. That video is still to come. We are just waiting on another part to be replaced on a car to do a post repair um, capture. So we're waiting for that first before we post that video. So that might be another week or so. So stay with us. Thanks for watching. G'day guys, welcome back again. Today we have got a Holden Crewman in that is running very rough at idle. It's got an engine light on. I'm resting the camera uh, on my body and obviously you can see how bad the car is vibrating. Um, so for those of you that don't know what a Holden Crewman is, it is basically a Commodore that has four doors and is a ute instead of a sedan. So. We can jump out and have a look at that if you want to see it. Bit of a monstrosity of a thing, but um, anyway, running really rough at idle. Um, take the revs up and it sort of goes away, which is already leaning me towards the fact that maybe a vacuum leak. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to get the scan tool. We're just going to see what that code is first and then we go out to under the bonnet and we'll have a look. All right, we've got the Verisong. So let's jump in here and see what we can find. Let this uh, initialize, get in there. Let's go to Holden. 2005 Crewman VZ, 3.6 litre. 175. Let's go code scan while it's running. Let's let it do its thing. Idle. Oh, no CAN bus communication. What's going on here? O2 sensor fault, low, O2 signal low, bank one, S bank one sensor one. It's weird, that is very weird. But it could be because we've got a crap load of air. So let's get out of that. Let's go back. Let's just clear these. Yeah, well, the car's not running now. Another code scan. Yeah, okay, we're not really worried about that. It hasn't come in for that. It's only come in for running rough. Alright, so no serial data. Alright, we're not worried about that. Let's go back out of that. Let's go to engine. Data display, fuel trim data. Let's go custom list. Let's deselect all. Let's go RPM. Let's go fuel control. Look at these trims first and see what happens. <laughs> Start it up again. Well, we got nothing happening on the fuel trims. There we go. Fuel trim's moving, getting very high. Well, we can see our fuel trim's at idle, just maxed out both banks. So, 
what I'm going to do, obviously like what we do when we think we've got a vacuum leak. There we go guys, I hope you can see that. Closed loop, fuel trim's really high. Let's bring up the revs. Just went to open loop. That's not what I wanted it to do. I wanted to stay closed and then see if we could get the trims back to normal. Anyway, we have got a major issue at idle. It's adding heaps of fuel. Um, and I am suspecting a vacuum leak. So I'm gonna get out there and I'm just gonna put the smoke tester on. It's only gonna take two seconds to hook up. So let's just give it a go and see what happens. All right guys, we're set up here. We've got the smoke machine hooked up to the battery. Compressor on. I've got the MotorVac Cool Smoke Machine. You know, you have to bear in mind this is a, an EVAP designed uh, smoke machine. So a lot of the newer ones are designed to change pressure for boost applications. And look, to be honest, I use these on boost hoses too, and there's usually never any issues. But you do come across those boost hoses sometimes that actually only leak under really high boost, and an EVAP. Um, machine like this probably wouldn't do the trick to, to see all the leaks so uh, just letting you know these are great tools anyway so anyway I've got my bladder here we just plugged it straight into the air intake um, and we pumped it up and we're just going to turn the machine on so let's go smoke and see if we get anything and look at that you can already see it Can you see that? Absolutely pouring out. Where's that coming from? What I'll do, give me a second, I'll find it and I'll take you over to it. Hopefully you can see that. Coming straight out of that hose there. That hose has got a massive split in it. So hopefully you can see that split. That's what the leak is. That's why we have an extremely poor idle. That's that was leaking nearly. You can see how poor that is. That's absolutely my face is covered in smoke at the moment. So absolutely pouring out. We you know with our vacuum loss is that much at idle. Of course it's going to run like absolute crap, and that's why our short term fuel trims just peg full. You know full steam ahead. Twenty five straight away and then obviously it realizes there's an issue and puts it into an open loop fault strategy so we're going to get this fixed up and then we're going to put it back in and we're going to retest it and i'll show you how valuable these beautiful smoke machines are all right we've got the intake manifold up and as you can see here is the broken pipe here is the new one that's what it's meant to look like so we're going to put the new one in then we get the scan tool on it view some live data and check out the fuel trims New part on guys, there's the brand new hose under there, runs all the way under the intake manifold so over here. So let's jump in the car, let's have a look at the fuel trims now. There we go, as you can see, bank one closed, short term zero-ish, long term zero-ish, bank two closed short term around the one mark long term around the zero mark so clearly we had a vacuum leak and all is done now so there we go guys um, that was the course and that's how you determine whether you have got a vacuum leak or not obviously um, when we got it in it just seemed like it was so we went straight for that but there's a few things you can do by looking at the trims at idle and what they do at a higher RPM so um, we checked that out, we found that, and that's fantastic. This car still doesn't idle great because it actually does have a broken left-hand engine mount. But um, this is all done, clear the codes, and the car's going to go out and the customer will be happy. Thank you for watching.